the cob LED arrays, cob chip on board LED arrays, appear to be getting bigger and bigger. And this one arrived today. And this one is uh, described as new 12 volt, 70 watt, 70 watts to keep it here, 7,000 lumen, LED panel strip cob chip light lamp, 220 by 120 millimeter. I'll measure it afterwards. Uh, warm white. It's available in warm white and cold white. And this particular one came from a proper you know, a happy fashion skirt supplier, Fashionland 2015. I'm guessing that they probably just uh, take your order and then go and get it from the local market. Not sure. But uh, this one costs seven pounds forty nine and one pound sixteen shipping, so roughly nine pounds, which seems typical for these. There are lots of other listings which all are around about the nine pound mark as well. So uh, let's take a closer look. Let's measure it for a start. So here's a typical British measuring tape that has millimetres on one side and inches on the other, and it says, they said 100, 120, didn't they? Yes, they did. 220 by 120. This one uh, measures 112 millimetres, which is roughly four and a half inches, by 220. They got that one right, did they? Yes, they did. 220, which is just about, uh, say... Just over eight and a half inches. Eight and five eighths might be a good description of that size. So quite a large array. And I've tested this in the dark. I'll actually show you it in the dark. We'll wind it down. Well, I say the dark. It's it, The ambient light here isn't ideal for that test at the moment, but I will be testing it later on in the dark, right down to the very bottom, and then I'll tell it, I'll tell you in the description what how consistent LED chips were. But if I start turning this up now, uh, it's connected you'll see that there are, oh, way too, way too high. There are, and I had this noted down, yes, I've got it noted down, 12 chips vertically by 28 horizontally. And that adds up to 336 chips. Once again, it's, I'll just short this out. Once again, uh, it's got a uh, thick aluminium backing to it. It's two millimetres thick, this really robust. It spreads the heat very well. And to solder onto it, the best thing to do is to get the, a hot surface. I used the uh, clothes iron mounted in a vise, set to a low temperature just to heat the whole panel up and then soldered onto it. And it was fairly easy. I've got the leads too close to each other, each other here. That's why it keeps shorting out. The wiring of the LEDs uh, consists of a bus bar. The red one comes in, it's got a bus bar going up here. And then between each set of the four uh, in series, I guess it's wired four, four, four. Oh, it might not be though. I, th I couldn't actually say. Until one actually goes out, it's very hard to say if they're wired in that sense, going along the way, or vertically. Not sure. Um, I'll have to try and work that out. Um, the There's a bus bar on the positive connection from here, and it seems to have a series of uh, mini bus bars going along. And the negative goes up here, along to the other end, and then it has presumably got bus bars going along the opposite direction to feed all those sub-circuits of four LEDs. There is no current limiting. If I turn this up uh, to, say, one amp output, that's just going to be blinding, isn't it? Yes, it is, but it's blinding in here as well. The voltage goes up to... Actually, you know what? Let's take the exposure off so it tames down a bit. That's going to bear. The voltage... You know what? I should do the full set of tests. We'll start off by winding this down with the exposure control on. So at this point in time, it's drawing 20 milliamps the whole panel, 9 milliamps the whole panel, which is still visibly lit. And as I uh, decrease it further, let's turn this light off. I would say that there is one slightly dominant column of chips here. I'm guessing the machines, I'm guessing the circuit board's going through this way and the pick and place type machines feeding it on. Uh, in sort of from a series of reels and rows. And I would say this row here is very slightly prominent, and that even happens at the sort of lower intensities, where you can see even more now. And as I turn it down, I'll turn it down to the point you probably can't see it, to the point that it's just barely lit, and all the chips are illuminated at roughly an even level. There's no chips out, so it seems to be made with fairly good quality LEDs. Lighting-wise, if I flip this over and point it down the way at the bench, I'll hold it up right next to the camera, in fact. Um, let's uh, lock that off to give you an idea, and I'll start increasing the... Oh, no, let's not lock it off. That's just swamping everything out. So let's ramp it up to 12 volts. 
and the, at 12 volts, 1.6 amps, it's the warm weight, so it's uh, the, the camera's locked off to uh, compensate for that. It's producing, this would be a great work light mounted under a shelf pointing down at the bench. And at 12 volts, it's about 1.7 amps. But let's go further. Let's uh, do some tests. So I'll just set that up now and we'll take a look. Right, I've got the meter set up now. The large display is showing the voltage. The small display is showing the current. I'm just using this as a little generic meter for that. It's quite handy because it's got the crop clips on it, the alligator clips. And I'm going to start turning the voltage up. And note that uh, the... Well, I'll tell you when we get there. So let's... Uh, it starts lit litting. It starts lighting quite visibly, brightly, usefully, at about 10 to half volts. And it's only drawing 150 milliamps at that. If you wanted to use this as a illuminated, just a, a visual panel on the wall, I would say that you could probably get off with running it at less than 100 milliamps if you just wanted an illuminated panel just for visual effects. This is actually quite attractive in its own right. It'll be interesting to see if they do coloured ones. As I turn the voltage up, let's go for one amp first. I note that there is some voltage drop across the leads. That's why I've got the meters down locally, so that they're not showing that loss, although there will be a slight loss across the tiny leads feeding this. But um, let's go for the... We've got... Let's uh, nudge it back. One amp is 11 volts. Let's nudge it up to two amps now. This is getting rather ferocious for me. Shield my eyes here. Two amps, it's about 11.6 volts. Going up to three amps now. Oop, nudge that back. Three amps, 12 volts. Now, people say they use things like this on their car. I can feel the heat radiating off that. People say they use these in their car and they've not had a problem with them and, you know, even though the voltage just goes up quite high. The chances are that the thin wiring that their vehicle is using is acting like a low-value resistor, like maybe like sub-ohm, one-ohm, and that is going to make a huge difference here. This panel is going to get quite warm. I'm just going to feel it at the back of it. Th oh, it's not that bad. It's not bad at all. That is just, like, blindingly bright now. So that's equivalent of 36 watts power. Uh, can I go any higher here? Let's uh, let's go higher. Higher! Oh, this is just ferocious now. Uh, current limiting. Can I go any higher here? Yeah, I can go higher. It's at 5 amps. Yep, 5 amps, 12.6 volts. So, at, if you just connected this to with high current cables, your really large cross-sectional area, to a car battery, I think you could end up overdriving this panel. This is still 5 times 14. What's that? 5 times 14 is 50. That is about the 70 watts, isn't it? Uh, hold on. 5 times 14, just double-checking. That is the 70 watt. So, at round about 12.6 volts, that is going to reach its rating if you're just relying on the voltage alone. I'm going to wind that down because it is just ferocious at the moment. And that, I want to see how hot that's getting. It is starting to feel quite hot now. So that would need to be in a heat sink. But I would say that if you were going to use this as a general sort of light, using it at about 2 amps, um, using it at 2 amps, let's see what that was that. That was about... 2 amps was about... 11, say, 12 volts-ish. 12 volts actually pushed up to 3 amp mark, didn't it? Using a regulated 12 volt supply might be viable. And just treating it as a 36 watt source, 12 volts times 3 amps. Because it's not going to run too hot, I don't think, at that. Particularly if you have it on heat sinking. But if you're going to use it without heat sinking, I would say nudge it down to the 2 amps. This is ferocious. This is just far too bright to have on my bench. It's really quite an intense panel. It's like looking into a floodlight. Um, so, yeah. Um, two amps is around about 11.57 volts, so there really is no... There is no regulation in this. It, nothing inside other than just large arrays of LEDs in series. The four LEDs in series and the combined forward voltage that creeps up very slightly with the increasing uh, the voltage and the, the increasing current through. But... Um, this is a neat panel. I'm trying to think of uses for it. I'm thinking maybe a bench light is quite viable. And being a... Actually, well, how could you do that? If it was, if the bus bars had been going down the way, which they're not, it would have been viable to actually drill holes in this uh, for if you wanted to put a camera through a large illuminated panel. But I don't think that's going to work. I think it's going to... Um, I tell you what, let's let's do some damage to this now. It seems sacrilegious, but let's find out how. 
Let's get uh, this unit turned down. Let's get it on and let's see how they're wired. Are they wired uh, the short axis or they wired the long axis? And the way to find that out is to burst one of these LEDs. So I'm going to take a screwdriver now and let's zoom in on this and we'll see what happens. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to deliberately burst this LED here. So I'm going to go in. Oh. That one LED has gone out on its own. That's intriguing. That means they're not in lots of series. They are wired as a cluster in that series parallelity. That's quite intriguing. That means they could actually, each of these strips could be in parallel across that way. And how many were on the long axis? I had that written down and I've lost it again. There were 28 in the long axis. 28 divided by 4, 7. So every set of 7 LEDs could be a cluster and then they've got 4 of those in series. That means if a single LED chip fails, it's not going to affect the panel too much. That's intriguing. I thought I thought it was going to lose 4 there. And if I short uh, this out, I'm going to actually reduce the current in this unit here when I do this. Excuse me rambling about here, I'm just experimenting. Let's uh, let's whack the current right down here because I'm about to do something despicable. Let's whack it down to limit the current to an amp. And I'm going to try and short that whole LED out completely down there and see if I can get the rest of the... lose a section of the LEDs completely. I almost did it before and now I'm not managing to do it. Let's uh, get into this get some of this gel off here. Reveal that chip. So what am I seeing here? Yeah, I'm losing that whole section. I'm losing, hold on, let's uh, zoom out here. Let's turn the current down even further. Uh, and if I bridge this out, I'm losing a quarter of the panel. It's all every single LED in this section here is in parallel, and uh, then there's just four whole sets of those LEDs uh, in series. This set, then this set, then this set, then this set. I didn't expect to be that construction that it was going to be individual groups. That's very intriguing. It means that the loss of one LED is not going to be a big issue. And if it goes short circuit, it'll probably actually pop that LED with the current through the other uh, circuit. So that's a sort of built-in redundancy. It's also worth mentioning this little dam here is a sort of soft silicony rubber and then they filled the gel into that. Very intriguing. Could I actually peel this or is this going to... If I peel this up, it's going to damage the next LED, isn't it? Let's uh, try it anyway. Let's see if I completely destroy this, since after all I did get this so that you don't have to destroy yours. Try to lift this gel up and peel it back, but I don't want to damage the LED under it. I was hoping I might be able to expose the blue chip, but to be honest, they probably end up doing these ones with clear gel. I've exposed it a little bit, but uh, without going any further, it's just going to kill another chip, isn't it? You can get so far and then you can see the blue under that. I'll take that exposure down a bit. Yeah, you can see a sort of blue chip sitting under there, under that thin layer of phosphor that's left. That's very interesting. It's a very smart panel. Well worth playing with. It's got lots of uses for just running at low current, like 2 amps, and just using it as a general ambient light. This is a very neat panel indeed.